All right, so I'm doing a comparative static for um, a change in the wage of workers on the optimal number of workers that a firm will hire. So this profit maximization equation matches Hal Varian's chapter on profit maximization. Um, X1 represents the number of workers that the firm hires, that's an input. The input price is, of course, the wage of workers, and then X1 is always the number of workers. There's some other input, such as capital or robots or computers or whatever. Um, the quantity of capital they buy is X2, but we're keeping that fixed because this is a short run model. There's a price for that. And then, of course, our benefit in this function is going to be the price, which is exogenous, and that tells us this is a perfect competition situation and times the quantity that they produce, or output. And output is um, a function of number of workers you have working on the product and num amount of capital. So this is a production function. So if we're doing comparative statics, um, uh, just to summarize what we're doing, we're doing comparative statics for um, a change in some exogenous variable. The one we're choosing is the worker's wage. Change in W, in fact, let's do an increase in W1, which is exogenous. And what's the effect of that on the optimal choice of number of workers? And it oftentimes helps to start out with an intuition. So the intuition is that if we increase the wage of the workers, the firm will hire fewer workers. And this will tell it, it'll validate that, of course. And it will also give us a way of figuring out exactly how many fewer workers. Um, if we think about the curvature later down the road. Okay, so the first step in doing this is we look at our optimization problem and we take our first order condition. Um, so we have a line for the first order condition and we know the first order condition is going to be the derivative of the payoff function, the whole payoff function, with respect to our choice variable x, x1. <clears throat> and to take that derivative, we see that p is exogenous, so that behaves like a constant, and then we need to take the derivative of the production function with respect to x1, so derivative of the production function with respect to x1, and we're going to remind ourselves that the production function is a function of both x1 and x2. And then we come here and the derivative of that is minus w1, the derivative of that is 0, we set our first order condition equal to zero, and of course this is marginal benefit and marginal cost. Marginal cost is the hourly wage of the worker, so um, we're thinking of hiring one extra worker hour, or extending a worker's hour by one unit. The cost of that is just the wage we have to pay them for that hour. The benefit of that is the price. Let's say it's an umbrella company, so the price of an umbrella is $25 times the extra umbrellas produced by extending that worker's working time by just one hour. So let's say um, they uh, produce four extra umbrellas in their extra hour, so that the total benefit is going to be $25 per umbrella times the four extra umbrellas they produce, so that's $100 to interpret that. And then when we're doing comparative statics, we're going to want to draw a picture of our total cost and our total benefit. So total cost, um, we've got going up here, or, sorry, total benefit, total benefit, and we're going to draw a picture of that down here, our total benefit. So this is price times output F, um, and of course we always have our choice variable on the x-axis here. And it's a production function, so we know it's going to have this shape. And when we multiply it by a constant, which the price is a constant, it's still going to have that shape. It might rotate up or down, but ultimately this will be the shape of the production function for some fixed amount of capital, diminishing marginal benefit. The total cost uh, curve, well our total costs are going to be... Um, the total costs that are relevant will be here. Now this is a fixed cost over here because it's not changing, so it's not actually going to be relevant to our problem here. So the total cost as it relates to increasing x1 is just w1 times x1, and that is going to be linear if we have x1 on the axis. Um, total number of worker hours we hire out is just those that number of worker hours times the wage, which is going to be linear. 
Um, and you can think of this as total wage spending on the firm's part. And of course, if we're putting cost and benefit on the same graph, cost slash benefit slash cost, that's going to look like this. Diminishing marginal benefit. And actually, let me, let me make the cost on this one green just to make it a little more obvious. So this should be linear if I can draw it properly. Um, and of course, on the x-axis, we have our choice variable as usual. So we know that the optimal number of workers to hire is going to be where this bulge is biggest. And I'm going to label this x star old. Meaning that's the optimal number of workers before we increased our wage. Because we want to compare what's the optimal number of workers before increasing the wage to the optimal number of workers after. And let's just project this x star old onto these other two curves. x1 star old. x1 star old. Okay. So now what we want to do is we would like to know what happens when we change our exogenous variable in a particular way. So in this line, underneath my first order condition, I'm going to specify what way are we changing that exogenous variable and how will that change the two terms in our first order condition. So our exogenous variable change is an increase in the wage. And when we increase the wage, our first term, the benefit, does not change because there's no wage in this. So uh, no change. And this is in, it's representing the term above it. This, of course, is going up wage goes up. So when we think about that, if this term doesn't change, oops, sorry, we were at zero. We were optimizing this um, first order condition. And that basically just means um, when we were in optimum, if you have x1 here, and if this is the total payoff function, we know that um, the payoff function was maximized uh, at x1 star old at this point. It was maximized at that point, and the first order condition, the derivative there was zero. When we didn't change this, but we increased this, that means it's, it's no longer zero. It's actually less than zero, because it used to be 8 minus 8 equals zero. Now it's 8 minus 12. Well, that's less than zero. So our first order condition is no longer in equilibrium. That means if we are um, on this total maximization line, that means we have a negative slope to the tangent, so we're not at zero, we need to work hard to get back to zero. Okay, so we go to our next line, and this is asking the question, how do we get our first order condition back to zero? It's a question. Um, and I call this the counterbalance uh, line, where we're thinking about, okay, this is now less than zero, what are the different options for getting it back to zero? And we have either we can increase our benefit, that would be one option, or we can decrease our cost. And of course, these two arrows underneath each other should always be opposite, going in opposite directions to get us back to zero. Now, we're not going to be able to do that, but we don't need to worry about that for this row. This row, we're just trying to figure out what do we need to try to achieve with this marginal benefit and marginal cost. And then we move down to our next, our final line in the comparative static analysis. And this line represents what change in our choice variable would achieve these things we just specified in this counterbalance row. So one option is that we could increase the marginal benefit. That's an option. So let's come down to our benefit graph. And we, of course, know that the marginal benefit here is equal to the slope of the tangent. Um, oh, I always forget this stuff. I, for, I always forget. Um, it, when you increase w1, it's always helpful to show how that changes one of the graphs down here. So the increase in w1 is going to rotate this graph up. And so that caused this, that put us out of equilibrium, now we're trying to get back in equilibrium. Okay, so we would like to increase our marginal benefit, that would help us get back in equilibrium. Marginal benefit, marginal benefit we know is 
the slope of that tangent and all we can do is increase x1, increase number of workers, or decrease number of workers. Those are the only two options. So we test it out. We say if we increase the number of workers, we move out along this line. And you can see that as we move out, the slope of the tangent is getting smaller. Well, that's no good because we're trying to increase the marginal benefit. So let's try decreasing the number of workers. When we decrease the number of workers, the slope of that tangent, the slope of this line, is getting smaller, or sorry, is getting bigger, it's getting steeper, so we are increasing the marginal benefit. So that's actually going to work. So we could decrease x1, moving it this direction, moving it from that slope to a steeper slope. That's one option. The other option would be that we could decrease marginal cost. So we come over here to our new marginal cost curve and we say all we can do is increase or decrease x1. We can only move along this line. So is it possible for us to decrease the slope of the tangent here? And of course we realize that's not possible. The slope of the tangent is the same all along this line. So this one's not possible. So then we have our comparative static. What happened was we increased w1 increase w1 and that led at the end of the day to a decrease in x1 star which is what we were trying to find out now eventually we'll be able to think about how much will it decrease based on how much how, how strong is the curvature here for example if this is really curvy and decreasing it a little bit changes the slope a lot, that, that, that's going to say one thing. But we won't do that right now. So what I've just shown you is I've shown you comparative statics for an increase in the wage on the number of workers that this particular company is going to hire.